Welcome to IoT with the Best. Good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here today. The idea is to have a very, very simple core that I can reuse in several applications. The core will have two versions. The full version, as you can see, with uh, the sensor and, and the, the, the other uh, features that we described before, or a naked version that has just uh, basically the main chip. And of course, that will help us to keep the cost of the module as small as we can. An easy way to work with the IoT and uh, to play uh, with the hardware and software that allow us to enjoy um, the simplicity that Arduino built uh, in the, the previous product, also in IoT. Create a reminder for your users about a specific event happening in the future. Now, you could allow your users to just say they would like to get notified about, let's say, the next with the best conference, and they would like to go somewhere in order to watch the, uh, the, the live stream. You could create a reminder with the specific location you would like to bring the user to. You could also define the time. You could define the product they might want to use, and so on and so forth. So our slash products endpoints essentially gives you a breakdown of all the products that are available at a given location. So if, you're, if you want to do a Uber pool, you will see Uber pool. There's Uber X, Uber XL, and so on and so forth. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because essentially products are not the same in each and every city, and we have very, very localized products. You might see different products in India, you might see different products in Russia, you might see different products in the US. That's why you can use this endpoint to figure out what kind of options you could provide to your user in order to make the right decision. The driver API, this is the very, very first time you can actually tap into the data of a driver partner. And driver partners can um, decide to share the data with your application. They will definitely need to go through the authorization steps. They would need to to allow you to get the specific data for a specific scope. Development of new feature, usually very, very rapidly. <laughs> Uber is moving at a fast pace. Uh, the driver API was launched within a couple of months, probably around four months. Um, so that's how, how we think of, like in terms of a, an API, probably from the scratch. I'm just sending a WhatsApp message to my fridge. I don't have to install another app. I have it on my phone already. And my fridge is just a contact in my phone. Just like other people, you know, we, now we will start having machines in our phones. This is kind of our, our uh, vision. You never know how you make it, but if you, if you, are, if you, are, you have enough uh, endurance, you will, uh, you will make it and you will solve all the problems one by one. Putting Sigfox in your device is only going to cost you like something like less than two euro fifty or something like that. So you can actually put Sigfox for really cheap in your device. And this is very important. Uh, if you want to do millions of devices, again, it has to be cheap. By using RF technology, our charging system can be integrated into the smallest of electronic devices. This can eliminate the need for a charging port or even add charging support to devices that are so small there wasn't enough space in them for a charging port to begin with. All this code is uh, open on GitHub. If you want to uh, ping me and I will send you the link. And uh, you can see that when I click Connect, it actually calls uh, navigator.requestdevice. Do you remember the slide with the five steps? So we actually implement them here. We call navigator.bluetooth.requestdevice. I'm Brendan Lethal, uh, senior software engineer at Intel's Open Source Technology Center. I've been working on Radar IO for a little while, uh, about three years, I think. Um, and uh, I've been part of the IoT developer kit from Intel, but it's kind of grown into let's say, uh, I.O. for a lot of different things. Uh, and initially, it started because we did a hackathon with some Intel boards, and uh, we had a pretty terrible experience uh, on using I.O. So we kind of thought, well, there's got to be an easy way to get people to blink LEDs and do simple stuff with sensors. We just believe that on a lot of platforms, blinking LED is way more complicated than it should be, and there's no reason why it should be in 99% of cases. So we just want to remove all the hurdles for the simple stuff so you can get on and do the you know funky stuff um, that's actually complicated, not using the basic I.O. on your dev board. That should be very easy. The objective of conversational AI should be to make it more authentic, to incorporate human feedback. Um, and you know to do that, obviously, in a scalable way that doesn't pass along uh, larger costs to the consumer, 
if there's one thing that you remember from this presentation, it's that social isolation is huge for the senior market. It actually underlies a lot of the other healthcare challenges that this market faces. Um, I think you have, uh, you know, when you think about chronic conditions getting worse, when you think about the reasons that people don't exercise or they don't get out of bed in the morning, a lot of that is related to isolation. So once I click on the deploy button, please all shake your smartphone very hard, but I'm not taking any responsibility for any damage. Start. Please shake. Okay. Four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. ID. So we have to know who was last. And finally, we order by energy. And since we want to find the guy or the girl who shake best, we order the sending. Let's see if this works. So we see that Chow Yi is the winner with an energy of 1,430,015. So congratulations. We launched in January. We have 80,000 developers signed up right now. We have very significant partnerships that have been established as well. When you look at this partner with Arduino, um, Laura, and as well as Laureate, which is which is another company that that I, I can go over, um, but I I, I want to touch on our API. So this is what we'll be releasing actually next week, and this is what's gonna really enable you as developers to build your projects. This is the visualization of it. So here you uh, let me just go into one event receiver. So here we need to map into what we can read. So here we use the HTTP event receiver. So as you can see, if you have the MQTT or JMS, so you can use that and map it at that level. You can have the full checklist, everything uh, recorded onto the blockchain. And the best part is it is all decentralized. French uh, startup called uh, Highlight that has developed a motorbike helmet where you can see the GPS information uh, in front of you while you are driving. So it's not a small screen that you have on the top right of your vision where you have to move your eye to look at the screen. In this case, the full vision that you have in front of you is augmented by GPS information. Now, with JavaScript, there's this amazing open source library called Johnny5. And Johnny5, um, knows about lots of different boards and had a talk um, over the USB connection to the board. And so it encapsulates all of the complexity so you can get down to what you actually want to do. So if you have data coming from your sensors into the network, then you can hook it up, uh, like a, hook up a web page that shows that data changing in real time. And getting the, an LED to blink is basically the hardware equivalent of computer science's hello world. So really the only solution is the other one of taking these web and mobile developers, taking the tools that have been built to allow these web developers to do multiple deployments to production per day and bringing that tool chain to the embedded world. Welcome uh, to our talk, IoT development and what developers should know uh, when building IoT solutions. Look at the service IoT application, for example. They were able to use some open source code for their chatbot, <laughs> you know, and then they used our, our APIs, you know, to, you know, connect all that data, the sensor data to R to cloud, and it was that easy. You're not stuck with the silos. You know, it's it's all open in terms of the interactions and the devices and the cloud services you want to connect. So we're API first. Um, we're fully integrated for our SDKs. Goodness, we have about um, nine different languages. And then last week we just released our Tizen SDK, and it's just really cool what you can do. And so we use Swagger for our API console, so you can actually see these APIs in action. HP was looking a few years ago into moving into the Internet of Things space, 
and trying to build their own Internet of Things cloud. There were two people in the team given the challenge of coming up with an Internet of Things product. We had took an unprecedentedly fast time to market. We started the engagement in March. We had the announcement out in July and the watch on the market in November. So the test of the market proved to be true that fashion, a fashion smartwatch was something that was needed in the market that people wanted to wear. This is how the Nodrad flow looks and Nodrad is your uh, workspace in which you will be writing uh, code. So uh, you just connect up and drag and drop a lot of components connected because the connections already been done for you, the masking. So it's fairly easy. 30% of all produced products is, is wasted. So that, that whole value chain of producing on, on a huge scale because then the unit cost drops, right? Then shipping to a local warehouse and then hoping it gets sold is a very outdated value chain to me. And what 3D printing could do is that in the future you would go through, through 3D hubs, right? Maybe, hopefully. Um, you would order the product you want. The moment you order it, very local, a 3D printer will start producing your product, right? Um, you will pick it up within a few hours and you will have your product. So the turnaround time is very fast. It's potentially cheaper as well because the value chain is so much shorter. Uh, and you don't produce what is not sold, so there's zero waste. 150 uh, questions and, and the security test that we are uh, delivering for, for your IoT so solution, based on this, uh, we'll, we'll, this we'll deliver uh, a security uh, level uh, for your solution, uh, which will be bronze, silver, or gold. You can construct a lot of that object uh, using just automatic parsing of the header files, using you know just basic tools like cat grab and awk. Um, and uh, you can make use of like indentation and stuff like that because doing generic uh, C parsing is surprisingly difficult and there are surprisingly few tools that I've come across at least that will allow you to do that. Electricity is a big problem and they were able to invent this generator that's powered by urine. Um, so this is in Africa. That obviously means a lot more entrepreneurs are being born here, which is a huge thing because that means that our economy will start growing because instead of us exporting or relying on the rest of the continent to provide for us, we're starting to provide for ourselves and we're starting to be self-sustainable, which is a very big thing. So this has to be done in the receiver. So all the intelligence and the connectivity beyond the, the receiver needs to be done in a powered node. So for example, the Open Connectivity Foundation, which has now joined with the All Seen Alliance, or Apple HomeKit, Brillo Weave, um, IBM Node Red, or into the Watson Cloud, or basically any other TCP IP controller. If we're able to integrate IoT into that, um, then that helps not constrain the market flow as the IoT is able to. Um, track as the transaction is going along and automatically write that to the blockchain. The way we look at the world is through the lens of cost, quality, and schedule. And none of these things happen by accident. They all need to be managed. And as the saying goes, you can't manage what you don't measure. So what, what I'm going to talk about today is uh, some methods to do that. And the last one is a very cool uh, mechanism, which is um, notify observe mechanism. This means that on every change from uh, of the resource, this means every client that wants to change a resource, another answer will be sent to the from the server to any clients uh, we are registered and be aware about the new the new change uh, the new value of the resource. So you have something consistent that's pretty uh, efficient. I have evaluated your boot to angry. You should calm down before your processor overheats. Trust me. Have a break. Have a kid cat. So that's it. That was just a little demo, but to show you that Pepper is mainly a robot that is made for interaction. The hardware is not, uh, is of course, not everything on the, on the robot. And uh, one of the interesting part and really essential one is the software. So here uh, you can see the application that was running on the robot at the beginning of the uh, of this uh, of this conference. The tool we are providing here, it's called Choreograph, is a graphical interface where you can design your uh, your applications. 
I can create sub rules. Yeah, you can pick on the picture one of the motor of the of the robot. Decide of the first position, record it. Decide of the last position, record it, and the robot is going to uh, do the movement from the first one to the from the first position to the last position without anything expected on your side. So. It's really important to take this into account. Uh, it's a machine that is that people are expecting to behave almost like uh, like a human. We are using uh, pretty famous languages uh, in order to control uh, to control the robot. So that makes it pretty easy for any developer to just jump on the tools, learn about the APIs we are providing, and uh, create application for the for the robot. We are providing this software for free. Uh, you can find it on the um, on the website that I'm presenting. This is an animation I made so as to have the robot waving at someone. And this is an animation that has been made by a professional 3D animator. So you can see that he's using the whole body and that clearly it makes a difference in terms of how people tend to perceive this. Two very good uh, graphs that show how ever since, the, ever since those boards and platforms came out, uh, now you're now able to to apply lean development and agile de development methodologies normally used in software to hardware manufacturing. The government needs to be able to be more fluid in, in creating a, a standard and, and a regulation or a regulatory sense for it, not actually regulating it, but creating a, a regulation. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you very much. Bye. See you guys. Thank you so very much for joining and uh, have a good day, morning, evening, uh, wherever you guys are. Thank you and uh, see you next time. Bye guys.